gracious Lord has used this, the writings of this script to, to draw my heart in a pant after him. And <clears throat> like I tell people, I have retired from ministry. I am just pursuing intimacy. I just want to know him. I just want to be his friend. And when I read about the patriarchs, someone like a Moses, <clears throat> 40 years of pursuit in the wilderness. You know, his father's name was not Jethro. That was his title. In Exodus chapter 3, Moses' father-in-law, amen, name was Ruel. And Ruel means the friend of God. So, by divine providence, Moses was led to Ruel, a man that had the oracles of God because he was a Midianite. That means he was one of the sons of Keturah, the wife of Abraham. If you know the story, please, I want you to follow me. <clears throat> and one of the things that endeared Abraham to God was that he said, I know Abraham. He will command his children to follow my ways. So when Sarah died, amen, Abraham at 120, now, 120 is the age of stature in the spirit that the Holy Ghost can rest upon you. You see, in Solomon's temple, it was 120 priests. As they were singing in one accord, the glory of God came upon that tabernacle. In Acts chapter 2, it was 120 disciples. The cedar tree reaches a height of 120 feet. That's what the Bible says. The righteous shall grow as the cedar of Lebanon. So the cedar tree attains a height of 120. Amen. At that height, there is no contrary wind that can uproot it. But at 120, its root is almost 300 feet. So what you see outside, amen, is just a minuscule of what that tree is within. I'm going somewhere. So when Abraham married Keturah, he taught his children the ways of God. Because those patriarchs, they custod God's ways and they can impart it. That is how you know a patriarch. When Abraham was there going, he laid hands on Isaac. Isaac lays hands on and transfers his walk. Please follow me. So you see, all of them are able to transfer or transmit the aggregation of their works in the spirit. They have collated it. It has become flesh. It has become experiential. Amen. And so they can transfer it. So he transferred to the Midianite one of his sons, the walks in the spirit. And Moses went to that man and he began to teach him the oracles of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And told him that is a portal at Horeb. There is a portal at Horeb. Keep going there. One day you will have an encounter. And so Moses, 40 years kept traversing that wilderness 
My father-in-law told me there is a portal here. My father-in-law told me there is a portal here. Then one day an angel appears to him in a burning bush. Please, I want to, I'm going somewhere. Please just follow me. Now, it is a common sight in the wilderness for bushes to be burning without you igniting them. It's a tree that has a seed. When it is hot, it will pop. And then it will catch fire and begin to burn. But this one was different. He said, I will turn and see why is this one burning and it's not consumed. It takes a man who had fellowship with the presence of God to recognize divine moments. Oftentimes, divine moments come in ordinariness. Hallelujah. Please, I'm going somewhere. Oftentimes, we look for God in the lightning and the thundering. But you see, he's often in the ordinariness of life. Something as simple as loving your neighbor, loving your wife, not keeping malice, forgiveness, those ordinariness. That is where God is formed. I'm going somewhere, please. And so he turned when the angel saw that he turned. Moses, Moses. And then he began a journey of a lifetime. That one encounter. Amen. The Lord introduced himself as Yahweh. He said, by my name, El Shaddai, the mountain one, did I reveal my name to myself to Abraham, but by my name, Yahweh. That Yahweh is a wrong translation. It's actually yod Hey vav Hey. That's the actual sacred name of God. yod Hey vav Hey. Now because of the sacredness, the, the translators changed it to be more accommodating to man. He said, that is my name forever. And you can see when Moses climbed Mount Sinai and was there for 40 days and 40 nights, his natural propensities were suspended. How can you survive without food, without water for 40 days and 40 nights? Because when you step into that dimension, you step into eternity. It's another time zone completely. Can I just come down. You see, sometimes when you're praying, I want to be very simple today as we will climb. When you are praying, sometimes you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, and you think, I must have prayed for 30 minutes. And then you look at the time. It's five minutes. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. And then you wind yourself again and wind and wind and wind yourself. And then you think, this must, surely must be one hour. You check, it's 10 minutes. Because you are still operating within the ambit of time. And time is the death of man. Man was not a time creature because he has hid eternity in their hearts. Man was an, please follow me, was an eternal being. When he fell, he, time captured him. And then time began to rule him. Because if you live by time, every ticking of the clock, you are dying. But if you are an eternal being, every ticking of the clock, you are living. You change the story. You change the narrative. Please, I'm going somewhere. Follow me. You change it. You change your times and your season. You are no longer under the smiting of the sun, nor the smiting of the moon. The Lord has become your shade at your right hand side. It was that dimension, please follow me, that the Israelites enjoyed under the canopy of that angel. Their clothes did not wear out. Amen. Their shoes did not wear out. There was not feeble amongst them. The clothes were growing with them. Because it was a different atmosphere. 
this God did not allow the sun to smite them. I'm going somewhere, please. So Moses, Exodus 19, says Moses entered into the thick darkness where God was. Someone will ask me, darkness, is that not satanic stuff? I want to say something. Satan never created anything. Never invented anything. He's a creature. He's not a creator. Can I say something? Satan is not the prince of darkness. Satan is a slave of darkness. Big difference. He lies to you that he is a prince of darkness. No, he is not. He is a slave. What God used to bind him was darkness. So he can't repent. He can't do good. He can't think good. He's continually evil. Now he thinks he's a master of darkness. But it's darkness that mastered him. It's a judgment from God. But he doesn't know. And please follow me. And he lies to you. Revelation chapter. Thing 14. How did they judge the Antichrist, the beast? The Bible said God poured darkness upon his throne. So when you hear darkness of God, is they are his mysteries. Is unapproachableness. But a man out of hunger and desire is stepped into that dimension. And the Bible says where God was. Immediately he stepped into that dimension. You know what happened? The reverse time. To billions of years. Billions of years. And Moses went to the beginning. That was where he went to. And became. He became a co-creator with God. He saw how in the beginning. God created the heavens. It's not heaven. It's plural. The Shamayim. The heavens and the earth. He saw Abraham before Abraham was. He saw how God created the earth. He knew the secrets of atoms and molecules and protons and photons. He knew the secret. That was why when he stood before the Red Sea, he had the code and the Red Sea had to part. This is a God. He knows our codes. I'm going somewhere, please. By the time he came down the second time, the Bible says his face was shining and the Israelites were running from him. Was it just light like this that was shining? No. His face was lion, ox, eagle, man. Lion, ox, eagle, man, lion, ox, eagle, man, lion, ox, eagle, man, lion, at the speed of light, lion, ox, eagle, man. He had to veil himself. I'm going somewhere. When he died, his body had so interacted with divinity that they could not allow the body suffer corruption. It wasn't Jesus alone that his body did not suffer corruption. A man, an Old Testament said his body did not suffer corruption. Michael took the body. A fenekesin shandagano fosen a yene kovonesayan tashin. You know, it was God that killed him and buried him. Or else Moses wouldn't have died. You don't believe me. You will not have died. There is a way you will expose your, your, 
your molecules and your atoms to the very Shekinah glory of God. You will cross that. That will see you and skip. I can't take this one. I'm going somewhere. It was more God that did his burial ceremony. God had to kill him himself or else he wouldn't have died. You don't believe it? Oh yeah. He will not have died. Why was Satan after the body? A dead body. Please I want to say something. This is true. The Antichrist is around already. I was taken in the spirit. Please just follow me. I'm building gradually. I was taken in the spirit one day and I saw him. He's in Germany. He's already around. And world leaders are going to him. He's a person. The Antichrist you read in the Bible is around. Have you heard of the Celtic fathers? One of them that was buried. And 400 years later, they went to, they attacked that monastery. And they went to dig up his, his body. His body was still intact. The clothes intact. 412 years. The body did not suffer corruption. Worms, they didn't eat it. The, the rest, you've not know, heard of Elisha. His dead bones they threw a dead man. The man resurrected. There was a residue of glory in his bones. I'm not permitted to say that. And we can see the one obsession of Moses is the presence of God. One man with one stick brought down a civilization. He brought down a civilization with a stick because of one encounter with the name of the Lord. I'm going somewhere. So, Ruel taught him the ways of the Lord. And Moses began a quest. How many of you know, like I said, the five books of Moses, he did not write them by God sat him down and said, Moses, okay, write, write in the beginning, in the beginning, God created God. No, he was a participant in creation. He was a participant he saw how angels were crafted and created. He saw. But you see, the problem with the Israelites was that when they saw the thundering and the lightning, they drew back. It has always been the problem of the church. We run from intimacy. We run from the fire because we know as Apostle Michael was saying yesterday, we don't want to die because the fire will cremate your flesh. Moses, God talk to him. Whatever he says, come and tell me. You see, and that's what you see in the present day church. My pastor said, my pastor said, my pastor said, my, I'm not against it. My papa said, what is the Lord saying? You can't hear God. Uh, amen. A, a man has taken the place of the Lord. Because can I say something? The fivefold ministry was not God's original intention. Even the ironic priesthood. Please, I'm going somewhere. Was not God's original intention. It was a product of Israel drawing away 
He wanted all of them to climb the mountain. Five million people. And, uh, and five, he didn't want a box to contain his glory. He wanted man to carry that glory. Five million, they will have finished this age. Those five million, they will have finished this age. But God could not find man because of lack of strength. Imagine five million people marching through the wilderness with the Shekinah glory upon them like that physical act. Imagine if five million of them had climbed. You see, because he wasn't climbing mountain physically. It was ascension. It was translation. It was transfiguration. When Moses came back, he was not a man. They drew back from knowing their God. Can I say something? You will read about Jesus. Please, I'm laying a foundation. He went into the mountain. That is not correct English. How can you go into a mountain? He's telling you it's not a physical mountain. Amen. He entered a dimension. He entered a realm. That was what the Israelite, because it was El Shaddai, the mountain one, one who is a mountain, one that men should climb. <laughs> One that men should access. One that men should ascend into. They shied away from the high price of intimacy. And you can see what happened to them. After a while, idolatry took over. When the heart is not close to the presence of God, the next thing, an idol will form an image. That place the heart was coming from, Egypt. Amen. The God and the system and the culture of that place will form an image. And there is no time that is so much idolatry in the church than now. The idolatry is not a physical thing. It's the worship of self. And my brother was preaching about death. You know you can't kill yourself. You know that. You can't kill yourself. It's suicide. But spiritually you can't kill yourself. It's not possible. <laughs> It's God's presence that kills a man. And Samuel killed Agag in the presence of God. Agag is a hidden king. He was an enemy of Israel. You slay kings or nations that are anti your own nation. You slay them in the presence of God. No, we are hers. Please, am I making any sense? Idolatry, you will worship self if you are not addicted to God's presence. You will worship self. You will fall to the idolatry of this world. You can't resist it. And so we don't seek God for ministry. We don't even seek God for anointing or for power. We seek God to know him. We seek God to be his friend. Because the last day, sevenfold power, he will only give to his friends. He's not going to trust anybody with, his, with the powers of the ages to come. Except the man has become his friend. You must Pursue him with a desperation. He said, I know you or I die. And then the hunger and the drive will slay you. Because what actually kills a man is hunger in that place of tears, of, of panting, of, of cry. There and now, when 
will I see my God. Because X, Deuteronomy 18, 18, it's 8, 18, I suffer thee to hunger. Hunger is suffering of the Lord. We don't know hunger as that. We think it's one tiny thing. The greatest frequency in the spirit after the fear of the Lord and humility is the hunger for God. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after God. They are blessed. Not because they have a car or have mansion. That hunger is kingship. A hungry man, he might not have anything, but he's a king in the spirit. And the spirits know your hunger displaces principalities and power. You don't need to bind and lose. Your hunger alone is creating an energy, a frequency, a power that you are not aware of. It's just a simple message. You see that simple prayer from a heart, God, I need you. God, you are, and the heart is crying, God, I need you. I am nothing without you. You see, it's very soft. And it's not shy, it's, it's soft. But the power it wields in the spirit, you are not aware. <laughs> That's why the, the thing, I'm a pastor. And uh, one thing, pastor, I lost my hunger. That is one complaint of every Christian. I've lost my hunger. One week I'm on fire. The next week I'm down. It's Satan. The attack of Satan is not Boko Haram. It's not. It's your hunger. It comes and attacks it. If he attacks your hunger, he has killed you. Because he has cut you off from supply and power. The powerful man is not the man who raises the whole dead. He comes to a graveyard. Every dead body raises up or wins the whole world. That is not power in the heavens. In the realm of men is power. But in the realm of kings, in the chronicles of kings, is the panting heart, the heart of a deer, as the deer panted after the waters. So my heart panted after the You see that panting? You are generating energies of the spirit. I'm serious. But we want mysteries and it's good, nothing wrong with it. But that simple devotion to Jesus. This is the greatest commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul with all thy strength because you can't obey the second commandment without that neither can you obey any other commandment I'm going somewhere the church lost her hunger chaos of this world and deceitfulness of riches suffocated our hunger and then killed it it is the glory of God to conceal a matter. That matter is him. God is the matter. One of the names of God is Zephaniah. Zephaniah means God is darkness or God is concealed. But it's the honor of kings to search it out. That's the king. A man who shuts himself away in the closet is not asking for ministry. He's not asking for power. He's asking for God alone. I just want to be your friend. How can I be your friend? Show me your ways. Show me your glory. Show me. Praise the name of the Lord. A 
Amen. The greatest demonstration of God's power is a man that can sustain hunger in ever increasing degrees. To keep a man hungry, it takes powers of God. Check your life, you will know. To sustain hunger, God's hand must be upon you. That is how I know a man of God. I don't judge by your preaching. I don't judge by your things you do. I check the hunger. I can smell it. It's a fragrance. Very small but powerful. I can smell it. You can smell a man who has come from that realm. There's an aroma around him. And one way you will know is brokenness. You will see brokenness. A man who has met the God of Jacob and Isaac and Abraham. One thing you will know, you will see, is a broken man. Because you can't meet God and your flesh will remain alive. I understand young men are usually moved by gifts and giftings of men. The gift of God are without repentance. Praise the name of the Lord. But we can't discern presence from gift. I'm going somewhere. I'm closing. After the encounter of Jacob with an angel, he came out with a limp. God will dislocate your structure. He will dislocate your person. After Moses asked say he was a man, mighty in words and deeds, by the time God had finished him, he became a stammerer. I can't do it. God had to push him. I say what kills us is hungering for God's presence. What we slay him, man, he said, that suffering, I suffer thee to hunger and to be in test that ye may know that man does not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Can I say something? Do you know that Moses did not survive by manna? Is it written in the Bible that he hates manna? Manna was a product of disobedience. They were crying. What God wanted them to live by by was God's word. Strictly, there would have been a supernatural breed of men. Because they said, you shall be to me a kingdom of priests. They would have just, what God will say, it will sustain them. Can I say something please? I have been to Eden, the garden of Eden. Physically. I met an angel called Eden. If he appears and starts smiling, I've never seen someone smile. If he starts smiling, the portal to Eden will open and I will step there. I have seen that first Adam. Adam, 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 Adam. He didn't have flesh and, and bones like you. His body was gold because the gold of that land was good. His body was gold. There was no dust like this in Eden. It was gold. So he was a golden man. It was pure. It was the fall that changed his configuration. And can I say something again? There was no oxygen in Eden. Adam wasn't breathing oxygen. He was breathing God's presence. Because the Bible says God came to him in the cool of the day. If you hear that thing, cool of the day, you would think it's when there is no sun. That word cool is wind. And wind is ruach. And ruach means spirit. What Adam was breathing was the Holy Ghost. He will breathe in God. He will exhale God. He will breathe in God. He will exhale God. That was how he was expressing immortality. The final one was to take the tree of life. He wasn't breathing out carbon dioxide. Like my brother said, what is the difference? Goat is breathing oxygen. 
I'm breathing out. You two are breathing oxygen. I'm breathing out. Come on. What's the difference? If an angel comes here, he doesn't breathe your oxygen. There is a life within him that he breathes. He breathes a life inside. That's why he can enter fire. Fire won't burn him. He can enter water and become aquatic. You don't know that your body has those dimensions. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It happened to Paul. He said, a day and a half, I was in the deep. What does he mean? He was underwater for one and a half days. His body, because of fellowship, his body can transmute and transform. Let me not go into that. Please, I'm rounding up. Hallelujah. You know, there was something interesting that happened to Abraham <clears throat> in Genesis chapter 14. <clears throat> when they came to take Lot, they came to tell him they have taken Lot. Abraham got us 300 and 15 of his servants strained in his house. And the Bible says, Abraham divided himself. And if you know about binary fission, how amoeba reproduces. Or how does it reproduce? It what? It divides itself. And so what happened was, it was 317 Abrahams that were fighting. They were fighting five kings with a minimum of 100,000 soldiers. Military warriors. Against servants. It wasn't them. Abraham entered them. And it was 317 Abrahams. He learned those mysteries in God's presence. Can we see Songs of Solomon chapter 1? Let him, the song of songs, which is Solomon's. Of course, you know Solomon's name is Jedidiah, beloved of God. Please, this is not an erotic scripture. It's an allegory. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth for thy love. Is better than why? Because of the savor of thy good ointments, thy name is as ointment to pour forth. Therefore, do the virgins love thee? Draw me, we will run after thee. The king has brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than wine, the opera. This word, let him kiss me. Actually, the meaning is to kindle with fire, to inflame. It is known that through that physical activity, that's why you shouldn't do it except with your wife. Amen. No kissing of girlfriend, no kissing of boyfriend. Say amen to that. Say louder amen to that. 
A louder amen to that. Amen. amen. There is no holy kiss too. I understand, I pastor young people. <laughs> I've seen some people write these songs and say, let him kiss me. So the Bible allows that. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is not really a physical kiss. It's the way the bridegroom Arms the bride. It means to arm, to kindle, to ignite. So the armament of the bride is fire. That is how we are armed. That is our arm and ammunition. Is the fire we get from intimacy. Because I can't be kissed. From a distance, I can't kiss that brother there. Praise the name of the Lord. He has to draw nigh me. And that is not possible. It is not a human propensity to seek God. It is not in man. Man generally hates God. Hates. So a power has to be introduced. The savor of thy good ointments is the presence of God. There is something we are wired by the Holy Ghost to love God's presence. Even the unbeliever, praise the name. And so God uses the power, draw. That's the power to draw a man from where he is to where God is. Is power. So when you see hunger begins to rise inside you and unconsolable longing and insatiable hunger and thirst, you know that the hand of God is upon you. If you don't heal a fly, God's power is at work to draw you. Because the forces that rebeat man to the earth are strong. Please, am I making any sense? The power that holds you from seeking God diligently are strong. They are the powers of Satan, those are his powers for a man to be free and stay in the sustenance of hunger. A power is at work. Because of time, I will rush it. Then you see the progression. She began to say, I am black. When you read down, but comely as the tents of Kedah. The sun, look not upon me because I'm black. Because the sun has looked upon me. I mean, if you know that the rays of the sun, oh my God, help me. I won't take your time. I will jump. I'm just starting the message. But I'll be fast. Five, ten minutes, I'll be done. You know, the rays of the sun has what we call gamma rays, theta rays, and what? Alpha. Gamma, theta, and alpha rays. There are three rays. Um, the sun, when man fell, Adam was the one ruling the galaxies and the planets and the stars and the moon. But when he fell, Satan ascended and took those powers and turned the sun against man, turned the moon against man, turned the stars against man. That instead of those rays to be a blessing to man, it became a curse. It began to chart the life of a man. Like we are told, you will wake up 
All you are thinking is your job, your house, your house rent, your wife, your amen. It brings you into the Monday. But it was not like that because the birds, they use the sun to navigate and to migrate. I'm going somewhere, please. So, by the exposure to the sun rays, we became black. I'm not saying physical black. The soul of man, the heart of man became darkened because anything you expose to the sun, after a while, anything skin you expose to the sun, what will happen? It will darken. It's a mystery. And that darkness, you will lose the consciousness of God. You become self-conscious. So she said, I am black because the sun has looked upon me. It's the look of that being called. He took the sun and began to look on me. That is look. He transferred death to mankind because cherubims their power is in their eyes. Once they look at something, they will transfer their dimension to that issue. Anything they look at, that's why they have eyes within and without. Satan was not just a cherubim before. He was both a seraphim and a cherubim. Revelation chapter 13, it says from the face of the serpent. A serpent is a dragon. Is seraphim. Face is a cherubim. So he has a face and fire. So he transferred death to man. That man hated God. The vocation of man was to seek God. He was not supposed to walk. God walking was not God's original intention. All Adam did was to till the garden. The garden was his heart. Where God will come and fellowship with him. But he allowed that serpent to come into that garden and deceived him. I'm going somewhere. So you see, anytime you step out of the circumference of the presence of God. What happens? You come under the rays of the sun. The loss of the flesh. The loss of the eyes. And the pride of life. Gamma, Theta and Alpha Ray. The Alpha Ray is pride. And the greatest expression of pride. Is a man that does not seek his creator. Please, am I making any sense? Every child of God seeks God. But not every child of God is seeking God diligently. God does not reward them that seek him. He only rewards them that seek him diligently. We go further. Chapter 2 of Song of Solomon. The woman, the bride of Christ, began to. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. That shadow is divine presence. The practice of stillness in the presence of God. You know, a lot of Christians can't do two hours in silence. Zechariah chapter 3. Be silent, O oh, all flesh, the Lord has arisen out of his holy habitation. The practice of silence and solitude when you will sit down under God's presence for hours and you are gone 
your spirit, soul, and body. But you see, it takes practice for you to steal the agitations of the flesh. How many of you, it has happened to you, you are in God's presence, you just get up and go to the kitchen and open the pot and put it back and go back. It's the flesh has not been conquered. The, the presence have not tamed that wild beast. It's not learned obedience. And so how you do it, you, you sit down under his divine shadow. I'm closing. And marinate your soul. You intertwine that word weight day, that weight upon the Lord is to twist. Is the act of twisting your soul with the soul of God. Twisting your spirit with the spirit of God and twisting your body with the body of God until they have come into divine union. The way women weave basket, they take a thread, take another thread and weave it. Take a thread, take another, before you know a, an image is formed. That is how Christ's image is formed in the soul. You intertwine your spirit and the spirit of God, your soul and the soul of God until he comes into divine union. I'm closing. I want to see chapter 2, verse 7. I'm closing now. I'm just starting the message. Hi, but I'm closing here. Song of Solomon 2, 7. Let's see 6. Who is this that cometh out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke, perfumed with mar and frankincense with all the powders of the, of the match? And behold, his bed, which is Solomon's. Three score valiant men are about it. Of the valiant of Israel, they all hold swords, being expert in war. Every man had a sword upon his thigh because of the fear of the night. This is where you find warriors. It's not on the field. The warriors of the kingdom are not on the field. They are in the closet. They want to take the bed of intimacy. Because if they take that bed, they've taken the kingdom. If they take the bed of the king, they've taken his kingdom. It was like Esther. When the king asked her, ask me up to half of my kingdom. He said, no, it's not the kingdom I want. It's you. It's, it's you, the king. But you see, we chase the kingdom and forget the king. The king is the kingdom. That's why you see, there's a lot of kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. It's just talk. There is no reality. There is no power. There is no experience. Because it's not about the kingdom. It's about the king. It's out of the king that dominion comes out from. But we want the dominion, the domain of the king without the king. The Lord told me something. He said many are trying to establish my kingdom without the verdict of the king. I'm closing. Solomon's bed, which is the bed of the Lord, to take the bed, you must be an expert warrior. You must have your sword. Against the fear of the night. What is the fear of the night? Is the fear of your life. To take that dominion. To take that bed of intimacy. You must be a warrior. You must be a warrior. Because Satan will throw everything at you. He will allow you to do everything. But intimacy. He will fight it. He will fight it. But you see you must understand. How to use the sword of the spirit to fight. Our greatest battle is in the secret place. It's not in the public. It's not in the open. Or else we'll become casualties of war. 
Satan knows an illegitimate ministry. How do I know? Any ministry not born out of intimacy is illegitimate. Is a bastard. God will, will check his DNA. This ministry doesn't have my DNA. He slept. He fornicated with another Lord and gave birth to this ministry. He wasn't a product of intimacy. So he said, I will not have mercy on your children because they be children of fornication. It was halotry. What do I mean? A soul can be halotious if there is a word like that. The Bible talks about Israel. He said, remove the wardoms from between thy breast. It's your heart. That's the breast. Your heart. The wardom is, I want to propagate his kingdom without intimacy. I don't know the king and I want to establish his kingdom. What I will bat is an abnormal being. And the whole streets are littered with illegitimate ministries. And messages that was not born out of a place of intimacy and communion. You didn't commune with me. How did you get these children? But Lord, I thought you wanted children. He said, no, the way is you abide in me and then I will abide and you will give birth to fruit. That's the order of the kingdom. Young men, don't pursue ministry. When they put the ministry through fire, it will burn. It will be tough. Because it does not contain the DNA of God. The Lord will ask you, we have healed in your name. We have cast out devils in your name. He said, depart from me. You workers of iniquity. He didn't deny that it was in his name. It was in his name. But I never knew thee. That word no is what? Intercourse. I didn't have any intercourse with you. I know a pastor friend of a friend. While they were traveling to America, they got green card. So they have to do DNA test. He has three children. They have to do DNA test on all the children. They found out that two of the children were not his. He has been nurturing these children all these years. He asked the wife, where did you get these children from? You know, but we can't deceive the Lord. He will put the ministry through the DNA test. He will put the song through the D. He will put the everything through that paternity test. Will it pass? Does it contain the character of the king? Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is nothing I fear than to stand before that being. God. Uh, there is nothing I fear. So every day is there anything displeasing in my life? Is there anything that displeases you? Is there anything? Have mercy on me. I just want to know you. You see, I remember your youth. When Israel followed me in the wilderness, I remember the devotion of your youth. I want us to just bow our hearts before you. Lord, I come to a place of fresh consecration. I have missed you. I have, I have missed your presence. I had had, I had a love. I allow the busyness of this world and the, and the cares of this world to take 
place of intimate fellowship. When your voice was all that mattered to me. When your presence was all that mattered to me. Nothing mattered. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. And you took care of my needs. You took care of my needs. You took care. When I focused on you. Can you. You see I know your works. I know your patience. I know what I have something against you. You've left your first law. Go back to where you fell. And repent and do the first works. If your fire had gone down, what you have is the ashes of yesterday's fire. The ashes of yesterday that has often the case in the money at the end. A katai in the machine. A katai. I see angels of fire. I see angels of the altar ministering to your altars. Fire on your altars again. Your altars will begin to burn your heart. In the maker, in the machine, I cut him in his soul. Tend the guy, yeah. I just move and boost it again. I hit you, man. I get in my chest, but he ain't coming out. You know what? Yeah, I do see ya. I kill him. Lord, this this hunger is killing me. Help me. This hunger. It's hunger. I say no more. I want us to just take some five, ten minutes to just talk to the Lord. And just just groan. You say we in this tabernacle earnestly groan that this mortality may be swallowed up of life. Eku mo sahili ko saboni ata ni gostia. Eke menu fasini kai ni mo choni mata ye. Eki aso bahina. Eki aso tumni kasita. I ask for hunger. I ask for desperation for your presence. Atoni hataka. I see angels of the Lord, angels of fire, just ministering to your altars. I see angels sweep out the ashes of yesterday, the ashes of yesterday fire. You thought you still had fire, it was ashes. And the wind of the Lord is blowing and taking away those ashes. I command the north wind and the south wind to blow upon you right now in the name of Jesus. Come to the place of fresh consecration. Lord, we bow our hearts in brokenness before you. Forgive us for, for grieving your spirit. Forgive us for ignoring your spirit. Forgive us for ignoring your, our closeness. The secret place of the Most High. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Forgive us, Father, as a church, as a people. A Kamanofa Sinekaya, a Kanesha. We ask that our heart has been repaired. Our heart has fire be kindled again. Kiss us with the kisses of your lips. Kindle us again. With my kingdom living ministries. Awakening the nations to passionately love God and the beauty of His holiness. For more information about the ministry, you can visit our website, www.ignitekingdomliving.com. You can also contact us by calling us at plus one nine one eight six one eight eight zero seven five. Send your gifts and donations to Ignite Kingdom Living at PO Box seven zero zero four eight six Tulsa, Oklahoma seven four one seven zero. God bless you.